Hello, I am Dorcas Whitecap, and this is the Calenteer Internal Decision Meeting for February 25th, 2018. Uh, I, as I say, I am Dorcas Whitecap. I am the Internal Submissions Herald for the Kingdom of Calenteer. I'd like uh, other people who are online to introduce themselves. So, um, Uji, you're at this end of my little row of people. So, please say hello, Uji. Good evening. I am Ogawa Matajiro Ujimori. I am, I guess, a herald at large. I guess it probably be the most accurate description. Out of the canton of Axed Root, out of the barony of Cordon We in the kingdom of Kalantir. Giovanni? I am Lord Giovanni Lorada. I am Kite Regional Reporting Herald for Kalantir. And uh, I'm also based out of the Canton of Axe Root. All right. Uh, next is our East Kingdom guest. Hi there. I'm Mahuan Aruan. I'm uh, the uh, herald of the Crown Province of Usgard in the East Kingdom, uh, uh, listening in and doing a little uh, inter-kingdom heraldic anthropology. All right. And Michael. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Certainly can. Okay, because my... I can barely hear you. I'm Michael Stanbro. I'm, uh, I am I guess I'm at large because I don't hold an office anymore from the Shire Theobald College in the southern of Kalantir. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, and uh, let's just get to it. We are looking at the internal letter, the Kalantir internal letter dated 2018-01-26. Uh, so I am just going to jump right in. Uh, I have a setup whereby I can take notes uh, about what we all decide. And that's kind of where what I'm going to be doing. So I will not be looking at the camera. So, uh, and all right. So number one, uh, we have a device for Adelaide Ben Yunus Alzarka and the Blazon is Giranav 12, Azure and Or, a peacock in his pride, Argent. And we did discover uh, a conflict with that. Now, uh, my, my big question with the, the conflict, I, I know you had provided the uh, archival picture Actually, no, that's not from the archives. I'm still oh. waiting on the archive. Okay, okay. Then, then I guess my, my sort of my quandary will not be addressed because my, my consideration would be to see what the blazon was written on the form, of course, to clarify all of that, although I imagine it matches what uh, blazon was registered. Um, and yeah. the emblazon, we don't know yet what that looks like. If the emblazon matches this from the Atlantean armorial, then we're good to go. There's no conflict. Okay. But um, and then if that is, uh, if that's the case, would it be possible to tag on a separate submission doing, um, with that reblazon of the armory that Modar suggested? Yes, that will okay. be, you know, later. Uh, but like I say, I'm still waiting on the original sure. emblazon. Sure. And yeah, I just I just wasn't sure if tacking that on is something that we could do or if it would have to be something slightly more complicated. Okay, so what I'm going to say is I'm going to return for conflict uh, unless... Uh, can we pend it? Yeah, it'll it'll be it basically it will not go onto the external letter until we're sure it's conflict free. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess to me to say that it's it's returned for conflict versus pending, but yeah, as, as long as the same results are achieved, right? Whatever, whatever verbiage you feel is most appropriate, right? Um. 
and you know if we did not have access to the original emblazon which still waiting mm -hmm. if we did not have access to the original emblazon we would have to just return this for conflict because the best we can ever do really is compare uh blazons oh look i just received it uh, <laughs> and oh my gosh this is too perfect no, there's a conflict no no conflict no there, it is okay. a conflict. then we need to tack on that uh request to uh reblazon no 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 this no? is a conflict no. The picture oh, that I posted from the Atlantia Armorial is mm -hmm. incorrect. Okay. So, so it is returned for conflict. Okay. It will be returned for conflict, and I will post this picture that I just got after the meeting. Okay. Wonderful. All right. Okay. Return for conflict. So, uh, all right. Next item. Next item. Adelaide Frumke, however that's pronounced. My German is not what it used to be. Um, I'm guessing it's Adelaide. Oh, the Adelaide, that's the easy part. Oh, <laughs> uh, the, the, oh the that's right, not aid? Oh. Uh, the Adelaide. It, it looks like Adelaide. Her name was recently registered as Adelaide Vrumke. So... Uh, as for as far as this device, uh, per pale, per pure azure, a brazier argent and flamed proper within a bordure argent. Excuse me. Uh, I think that this uh, cl cleared the original conflict that was discovered. Yes. I, I would say without a doubt, it clears the uh, conflict on the original submission. So I'm going to say send it up. Uh, I certainly hope that no fresh conflict uh, is caused. Uh, right. Gwen, Gwen did make a note that, that he did not see uh, any conflicts oh, for came, the new one. Came through for us again. Thank him. Okay. Mr. Gwen, he's he's a champ. Awesome. Yeah. Um. Okay. So item number three, a name for Alana of Golden Sea. I simply entered all the information that I got, which was submitter's legal name. She's a minor. Uh, her legal name is attested by uh, her father. Uh, Golden C. Shire of, branch name registered, dot, dot, dot. I'm just going to send it up as is. Yeah. I mean, it's clean. Yeah. That, yeah. It's about and as clean as it gets. I do not. I, I don't mind all the work that Frida put into alternative documentation, but I just don't see any need for it. So I'm... Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's nice to have, but... It, and it would be awesome if it turned out to be needed, but I just... Yeah. yeah. Nice, okay. yes. Needed, not necessarily. Um. And for the sake of the fact that this is live and Frida might be looking at this recording, thank you very much for your effort. Yeah, but, Don't stop. Oh, but, agreed. Uh, like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to go like trying to like dig through all these links because there's a lot of them. It's that's like, okay, Boom, like, boom, 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 boom. There's a lot of oh, links. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, that's, that's, it's okay. It's all right. Crazy awesome. <laughs> all right. Sorry, Digi. Oh, moving right along. Item number four, we have a name and device for Alice Kerwin. Uh, starting with the, the name, um, I typed in what I received on the form, and they left off the link to Family Search, and Freed came through for us, so thank her very much. Uh, so we have all of the links, uh, all of the documentation for Alice Kerwin came from Family Search, and uh, oh no, for Kerwin came from Family Search, but we're all good. So she I'm just, also uh, found Alice in uh, to bring them temporarily closer ooh, um, oh, through Family awesome. Search as well. So I'd say we're yeah, very well. Well for you. Then. And you know what? Um, this this will be up to 
Uh, it'll be up to Gottfried Saker whether he wants to include the new documentation that Frida found, which he might decide to. But uh, for now, all I care about is send it up, typey typey. Agreed. So the device uh, is Quarterly Ghouls and Sable, a Swallow Volant Quarterly Ore and Argent, in chief a Garb Ore and a Liar Argent. I and so. I was actually conflict checking this one like right before before this started and I did not see anything remotely close. Excellent. Like there is um okay. Unless I totally like flubbed my search. <laughs> no, my my brain was wanting to put to declare that, but it's not so it's kind of in that weird spot. Mm. Okay. I don't think it's an issue necessarily. I'm just mm -hmm. seeing the wingtips nearly touching the top and not quite the bottom, but oh, it's uh, that's what threw me off. Yeah, no, I, I, I see what you're talking about now. Right. I do see your point, and I do not think it's a, a big issue. And okay. if let, let the higher ups duke it out. Excuse me. If somebody, yeah, if somebody wants to snark about it, my response will be, "We are heralds, not art critics." Bingo. Agreed. All right. I so just was making sure that the size of the swallow, in relation, does not change the uh, the blazon. Um. No. This is this is a this is a big swallow. It is primary. There's it no response. That this swallow is primary, and I think it's just fine. Mm -hmm. I, I, I see think. no reason to hold back. Okay, can we move along to number five? I believe so. All right, Anthony Cecilia, name and device. So starting with his name, uh, we've got the links, and we got paper copies with everything. Mm. Oh, right. So as Gawain pointed out, uh, the the reference has D. Cecilia, but then Magnus came through with uh, justification for Da Cecilia. So I think the name is good to go. Yeah. All right. With... Oh. So which um, Magnus is speaking to which cultural, which uh, country? Oh, right. Um, hey, Giovanni. Good speak question. Look at you. Because the da threw me off as well. But then so did the spelling of Anthony. With, so I'm not sure whether the da is supposed to be French or Italian. Right. So the Anthony is definitely them. French. And yes, appendix C. Yes. Right. But um, where would the where would the locative come from? Or the the it um, goes with the the preposition goes with the locative, so it's da Cecilia. However, Magnus is quoting a precedent, and he didn't he didn't specify where the precedent was found. But I know I read the same precedent when I was looking for things. Um, give me a moment, and I can uh, work on digging that up for you. Okay. And you know what? Okay. Somebody check Cena Appendix uh, A. Somebody check Cena Appendix A first, because I bet that'll be the quickest the quickest way. Okay, so if somebody can check Cena Appendix A, which I'm thinking that's where I found it, can we, because either way, uh, go ahead and forward this up to the next level. Uh, so can we talk to can we talk about the device or do we want to hold just for a sec i'm, I'm okay, okay worst case they'll change it at laurel that's true all right so then we to dig that precedent up i haven't yet but uh, who's who's going for cena appendix a first i was heading that way okay yeah G giovanni was heading towards cena and i was going to try and find that precedent all right do you um, still want me to dig for that precedent? Uh, yes. It, okay. it really, it can't hurt. I think that would be a fine thing. 
So while they are doing that, um, do the rest of us have anything to say about the device, which is Per Pale Ghouls and Sable, a dragon ore within a Borgir Argent? That's an awfully skinny Borgir. Maybe not returnable for that, but... Um, yes, I agree, but I also agree that we have seen skinnier get registered, and I do believe when I have seen people comment, gosh, what a skinny bourgeur, uh, people generally say period bourgeurs might have been skinny. skinny. Yep. Especially in Italian armory, I will say. Oh, um, Uji, you don't, you can stop your precedence. What's Magnus's up? Uh, Magnus's note is directly from Appendix A. Oh. It's in the notes on the Italian section. Perfect. Even better. Love it. So I'm, I'm comfortable now. Yeah. Uh, we may want to specify that it comes from Appendix A yes. uh, in the Italian, under the Italian subheading to verify yeah. where it came from. Yeah, de definitely cite it. Definitely cite it. And I'm adding that note. Oh, that's on the name, not on the device. Oh, no. yes, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I was typing uh, notes in the wrong place. Uh, note that Magnus's comment is a direct quote from Cena. Ah, I keep writing Sean. Cena <laughs> Appendix A. All right, that is excellent. Okay. Oh, happy, happy about that. All right. My notes are very important. Okay. Item number six. A new name for Cassius Vater. Uh, both name elements are documented from Family Search. Uh, the paperwork, the actual printouts of Family Search were included, which I always appreciate. People tend to forget to include them, um, and I am always happy to see it when people do. There's a batch number. There's a link. Anything to say, or shall we just send it up? They're both good batches, I'd say. So. All right. Oh, and here's and... the moment where I'm going to tell you my mnemonic for remember which batches work. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, please. Because pajamas kill me. Great. T C P J K M. Charming. Because nice. pajamas kill me. It's random, it's bizarre, and I will never forget it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that teaching moment brought to you by, in fact, uh, Zara Bachesed here in Forgotten City. Okay, item number seven. A new name for Conwil McNeoclus. We have uh, we have the documentation. Uh, what needs to be printed is printed. That is to say, uh, Mari's article about Neoclus which, by the way, does not say what the, the genitive case is spelled as, uh, but the paperwork was included, so it's scanned and printed, in, scanned and printed and included. Uh, are we worried about undated uh, Connell? Um... It sort of is dated. OCM says this name occurs reasonably frequently in the early pedigrees. You're right. That could be an issue. Going to cross my uh, fingers. Is OCM considered a dated resource within itself? I know there are some sources that are considered dated by themselves because they all pull from dated material. Is o I don't know OCM off the top of my head. That's a good point, and I don't know the answer for sure. I know, for example, conversely, Wolf 
is not. Um, exactly. Wolf, Wolf, let me see. Wolf is good for surnames, not given names, because the surnames all come from uh, period documents, but the, the, the given names, he tended to normalize them. Or was it the other way around? But, right, but uh, I was right. mostly worried yeah. about that commentary of this name occurs reasonably frequently in the early pedigrees. What is early? Um, since we could run into uh, temporal disparity there. Yeah, maybe. Yes. I mean, I know 1271 and 1489 could be early to some people, but <laughs> if we're talking early as in, you know, well, I think Magnus was, well, he, he was focused on the genitive spelling of Nicholas, um, and, uh, and nobody came up with any comments about whether the, the given name needed a better date than that. So I'm inclined to send okay. it up. That's perfectly fine. If, if I mean, obviously, uh, OCM is a recognized source, so. Right. It's, it's, it's a no photocopy source. No photocopy. So. Yeah, what you said. So I'm not worried about the source. I was just making sure that um, we weren't worried about temporal disparity without being certain of the date of the of the given name. That's all. Um, that is a good point. What is the date on the surname? The Neoclas? What oh, is I... OCM? Sorry, Michael. What? See, that's what is OCM? My problem. What I can't that remember. Stand for? OCM stands for O'Corran and Maguire. It is the Irish name source, and you will find it in uh, the no photocopies list, which is available in a couple of different places. And I can send you that link uh, after the meeting, probably. Okay. But yes, it, it, Michael, as you're building your, your herald, heraldic library, uh, first, ask me because it is possible that I have a spare copy of OCM. So, in fact, I'm going to reach for it. Oh, that is not OCM. Darn it. So, I might have a spare copy of OCM that I can just give you. Otherwise, go hunting for it because it's one of those books that you need to have. Shall we move along to item number eight? Sure. Okay. Uh, a device for Dmitry Zinonovich. Uh, Argent, a double-headed eagle sable maintaining a war hammer within a Borger Azure. I have no problem recognizing this is a double-headed eagle. It's very stylized, but yes, I agree. Yeah, that's that's my uh, my concern as well is that it is very stylized. Um, now, whether or not that's a warhammer throws me off. Um, I would call I that an axe first. Yeah, I believe that is like a, a sort of like ripped right out of the picnic sort of um, okay. warhammer. I'll just. Do, do, do. Where is my link for that? Uh, go to Miss fact, Home Pick Dick. Is it right out of third edition? It, it's. I pulled it right off of Miss Home Pick Dick. I'm right looking at it side. online. There's a Warhammer. Okay, okay that's fine. Like so much to meet this. I'm in a Canton, which is all about axes. So I see. It, I see something like that. That looks like an axe to me. <laughs> um. It's the, the one on uh, Mist Home is maybe a little flowery. This one is not so much flowery, but I would say it is very like the one that's drawn here in this emblazon. So I'm, I'm going to okay. benefit of the doubt. And you know, if this turns out that it's not a war hammer, but it's some odd kind of axe or pickaxe, um, Michael, Michael, I'm going to ask you, because I know this client is one of yours, right? Yes. Is he going to be okay with calling it a an axe or a pickaxe or something? Uh, no, he really wants a hammer. 
Okay, and that's the hammer that he picked. He wanted the that's the war hammer that he picked. Uh right? yeah. Am am I can you see my face on this? Uh no. 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 I am a, okay, I'm just a still picture then. Yeah. Well actually okay. you're you're not even a picture, you're a, a Lego man. <laughs> Come on, is that what it looks like? A Lego Basically, man? A little bit. Sort of a um a, very but no, Michael. Just, now I now that I'm looking at the Mist Home period Warhammer. Oh I, yeah, that's I can see it. That's yeah, yeah. That that eagle is totally holding a Warhammer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Look, comparing the two, Warhammer, done. I, Do I simply was not suggesting that we reblaze in it. I sure. was just saying the possibility yeah. exists. Yeah. That it might get reblazed higher up. Yeah. yeah I. I definitely think that looks very much like a period Warhammer. Good job. And and I see that the eagle is probably a little bit stylized. So I would say let us send it up as is. Mm -hmm. And if it gets returned for a redraw, well, you know, kind of be ready for that contingency. But, okay. uh, you know, it, 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 as far as the rules and, you know, contrast and stuff, I think it's the only, I have one last tiny question. Do you think we ought to include the word Fesswise, that is maintaining a Warhammer Fesswise? Yes. I was wondering about it because what, is there a considered proper default posture? Well, not posture, uh, but orientation. Judging, judging from, uh, from Mist Holm and, and just the way, like a lot of objects like that are similar in sort of shape to a hammer, it's business side up. I mean, like swords point up, hammers are the head of the hammer is vertical, except for the case of a Thor's hammer. Um, so I would say yes, it, there should be verbiage okay. indicating the orientation of the hammer. If nothing else, they'll say, "Hey." You don't need it and throw it out, but I'd sooner have it and not need it than yeah. There, no, <laughs> there is not a listing for hammer in appendix of Cena. So okay, <clears throat> okay. Just curious on that because for my own edification, if it needs to be identified as fest wise, does it also need to be identified as uh, reversed or whatever? Because oh yes, because the business the business side is the which is the business side. On the wrong I have side. the answer. I have the answer. Oh, what's the answer, Dorcas? Awesome. It's not in Cena. It's in the glossary of terms on heraldry.sca.org, and default postures has hammer is pale wise head to chief striking surface to dexter. So head to chief striking surface to the thing's own right. So there's the that's so to the, the left. Point. All right. So and then it says when you're taking something that's pale wise by default and making it fest wise, you rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. Okay. So the 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 striking surface would by that rule be face down. So yes. So it we does. want fest wise inverted. Yes. Fest wise, right? So it's not fest wise reversed because that would have the head on the other side. Yeah, the head is on the inverted. appropriate side, but it is inverted. Perfect. So yes. Let me write that down. I am B R T B. Okay. Good oh. catch. Thank you. Comfortable. All right. So, item number nine. We have another of the McNeoclus. Uh, family, um, Enon MacNeoclis, and this one is actually dated to 633. Oh, in the other source. In OCM. Enon is day. Oh, yeah, 633. In, in annals. Irish annals, that's right. Oh, dear. Amari. Oh, dear. That's still 600. That could be. Aww. That might be. An issue. I didn't even notice this until now. Aha! Uh -huh. No, it's well, a saint's okay. name. It's a saint's name. No date. No date needed. Okay, but if they're going with the dated name, I know the saint's name will overtake it. But 
how are we still within temporal disparity for same culture? Remind me the time, the year allowance. Well, they're they're all Irish, so five hundred years, but it's a saint na saint's name, so saints are essentially neutral in tem temporal. Okay, which one's they're, the they're, saint? The Enon, Enon. Is so the that same. doesn't clear anything on the other name; it just clears it on this one. Correct. Correct. So Enon, yeah. So ha, I'm about to make a joke. Saints are not temporal; they are divine. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I'm just happy. <laughs> Did I mention that I am in fact sick? Okay, so I just thought I'd mention. That. Oh, I could hear you're not having the best day. Best time. All right. So uh, this name, I think, is good to go. Uh, there might be a, t a problem with dates, except Enon Enon is a saint's name, so I think we're good. Hopefully, right. dating the given in the uh, in Mari's won't mess this up. But I don't. I think you're right. The saints' names will reign supreme. Haha. <laughs> Okay, moving along to Felix Ferrer. Unfortunately, Modar found a conflict. Um, Registered via the East. Yeah. Oh, and we have an yeah, Easterner right. on this on call. Kind of recently, <laughs> February of 2016, via the East. Oh ho. Uh. How easy do you think it would be to uh, get a letter of permission to conflict? Um, I cannot see who the conflict is with. Uh, Bob Fieler in Eplagarthy. Uh, let me copy. Yes, yeah, so I was just about to say, you might want to copy paste that. <laughs> where's, where's the chat part? Okay, there. There. Can you see that? Yep. Uh, not someone I know, but uh, I can't. Otherwise, I could check with the East Kingdom Slack channel, too. Okay. I'm on that. Okay. Um, meanwhile, I could uh, see if I could... We could pend it while I uh, reach out to the submissions herald and try and track down a letter of permission to conflict. Yeah, that's a possibility. And uh, seek L O P T C from East Kingdom. It sure is very uh, similar. Ah, you found uh, you found it. I found it here in the the East's uh, LOI. Um, yeah, we, we'd have to do some searching to to find the uh, the submitting herald, but. Uh, uh, we, we can certainly make a try of it. Okay. Okay, well, I will be in contact with the submissions herald uh, and or the principal and uh, try and uh, try and track down this person. So, all right, moving right along. Because, yeah, Cuth Cuthbert is, is ready to try and work with, the, with Felix about uh, figuring out some redesign, but yeah, if we can find, uh, if we can get a letter of permission, that would be great. Uh, okay, uh, moving right along, number 11. A new device for Fleer Frothesen, that's Argent, a chevron ghouls between two ravens respectant and a drinking horn sable. Looks good to me. I'm gonna. This was a, a resub at Kingdom, 
uh, I think, but I don't remember the details of why it got uh, returned at Kingdom, but uh, his name was submitted last August, and I think his name and device got submitted at the same time, but there were issues, so. But I'm going to go ahead and send this one up. All right, item number 12, a new name for, okay, wish me luck, Fruthjolfer Elger. Yeah. I, 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 you know, that's about as good a pronunciation as I could manage. So, uh, so the, the name is uh, documented in Gearbasi and the other uh, by names of the Viking Age runic inscription, paper copy included. So I'm just going to send it up. Nobody seemed to have any issues. Uh, yeah, I mean, other than date, no dates, but I'm. Well, Norse names are harder to do that. So, you no, know, Gearbasi is already dated. It's like anything pre 1100 is in Gearbasi. And exactly. then Viking Runic Age, that's, that's considered yeah. a date. So. We're good there. Anybody else have anything besides the fact that it's hard to pronounce? By the way, this young man <laughs> goes by Moose. He is a big kid and people call him Moose. And he wants he wants nice. a surname that means Moose. So there's that. Uh, shall we move right along to item number 13? A new badge for Genevieve de Chambray, per pure, a fleur de lis, per pale, or and ghouls. Nobody had any comments on the letter, and nobody has any here. It's a beautiful device. It sure is. Yeah. Okay, well then, moving, I'm going to say send that up. Moving along to item number 14, a new device for Gervais de Glanville Argent in FES 2 leather bags proper within a Bordure quarterly sable and ghouls. This was done on the fly at uh, the Twelfth Night consult table. Gervais is the guy in uh, Lonely Tower who uh, makes a million leather bags and hands them out. Just there's always every largesse from Lonely Tower includes uh, a huge bag of bags. So they decided that he needed to have leather bags on his on his arms. See, okay. like, I, I know who you're talking about, but I am struggling to yeah. put a face with the name. I'm like, I, I'm familiar with the bags, the bag of bags. And I'm just like, I can't see the person. He is so busy. He is always so busy. <laughs> hey, Dorcas, yeah. for your notes, um, I, have, I am in contact right now. Well, almost to be about to be put in contact with uh, the person from the east who we're seeking a letter from. Oh, nice! Uh, she is she is an active web minister, so I'm speaking with the kingdom web minister of the east uh, who is familiar with them, with the gentle. So <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay, so I am going to change that note from Dorcas will follow up to Giovanni will follow up. Feel free. Hopefully, I'll have a something for by by the end of the night. All right. Um, do you need me to uh, compose an LOPTC? Because I have okay. Backing up. This is item number ten. Uh, Felix. I have Felix mundane name, which needs to be on an LOPTC. Uh, right. I will. I'll first see if uh, this gentle is if she is willing. Um, and I will, you know, I'll, I'll show her the proposed emblazon 
and we'll go from there, I think, if Excellent. that works. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So, but I've got you down as taking point on this. Lovely. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Um, okay. So then I have my note for number 14, which is send it up. All right. Number 15, a new badge for some guy named Giovanni Loredan. What a troublemaker. <laughs> return for conflict. Return it. Return it. Just, just, just return it. It's fine. Perfess, or and Azure, three oak leaves Azure, and three oak leaves, two and one, four. So you have documented the, the, you oh, are specifically blazoned and emblazoned in future as those leaves on the bottom are two and one. Yeah, you, you, have, Correct. you have documented that gratuitously, and I love it. Thank Giada of, uh, of Cadoro. Oh, her, oh yeah. she's her a delight. Documentation. Her, her IAP documentation was what helped me put mine together. So thank you, Giada. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, no. Honestly, though, send it up. That and documentation I, is rock solid. And I actually looked at the documentation. It's not just, oh, my eyes glazed over because there was page after page. No, I actually looked at the pretty pictures. Yeah. And I tried to keep it to a page count that was, you know, doable. Sure. <laughs> well, and... And you were just right. We are allowed five images. Now, and in, I, th I thought I had read that. So, yep, yep. <laughs> That's how many slots Oscar has? Because I had 20 other images I could have pulled from. <laughs> well, and if people wanted to argue, you would have been within your rights and keep them close to the surface because you'll be within your rights yeah. to post them as comments in, on, you know, if they're, if they're right. called. People want to argue about it. So, and, and frankly, like with just the the first three pictures alone, you've already built a solid case, and you have you have gone gone above and beyond with this documentation. So, yes, send send it up. Yep, right that's now. definitely what I what I have written here. Um. And a quick side note, has anybody said anything on uh, the YouTube channel? And we don't have a, a, a live Facebook presence, do we? That's not another thing to be watching, is it? No. No. Okay. Uh, no, just, Hangouts doesn't easily go to Facebook. So, yeah, um, But there is no comments as I'm seeing them yet. Okay. And actually, something has come up on my end, so I am going to uh, depart from the, for the evening. But you all have a uh, good night and enjoy the rest of the commentary. Thanks for stopping in. Good evening. I the car. <laughs> Thank you all. Okay, bye. bye. Um, all right, then. Item number 16, a new device for Greta Traurnicht, Argent, in Fess 2 Thierse proper, and on a Chief Vert and Arrow Fesswise. Or. <gasps> or. Thank you. I don't think me is Madoc. Oh, well, still. I agree with an artist note to beef up the arrow, at least the fletching, because it at first glance it looked like a trumpet to me, a Ooh. straight trumpet. I would agree with that. <laughs> Until I honestly, it, it took the line drawing for me to notice that it wasn't before I even saw it, before you mentioned the mm -hmm. um, blazon. Um, this was hand drawn at a consult table. So we, we agreed. Yeah. I think these Thierse are just gorgeous. Beautiful. Yes. And honestly, I would say the shaft of the arrow is, is sufficiently sufficient, but it's the fletching and the arrow point. That, and I guess that's what uh, Kathleen was mentioning. The arrow point and the fletching are what need to be beefed up. Exactly. I'd agree with that. All right. Um, okay. So I have added that note that we're going to mention the arrow. We're going to add the blazon. Oh, arrow fess-wise. Or, and send it up. 
All right, item number 17, a new alternate name for Gwenny Margareta Melnith. And she wants the new alternate name of Berkey Chinua. Michael, am I pronouncing that right? Yes, no E, I think. I think it's just Berk Chinua. Berk Chinua. Okay, so we have uh, one of, I'm sure, many uh, alternate Mongol names to come during the, uh, the, the current reign. <laughs> but uh, we've got tons of documentation and many pages were included. Uh, so that's a good thing. Um, okay, now Gwen asked, uh, okay, there we go. The documentation construction of period Mongolian names has Chinua in it. So... Um, but yeah, there were five pages for, for Gawain to read, so if he missed the Chinua part. Um, however, you know what? I'm gonna look at the I'm gonna look at the paper and I'm gonna double check that you did actually give me what I thought you gave me. Because I would be so sad if the reason why that little spot of unpleasantness was because I didn't have the the, paper, the documentation that I thought I had. So forgive me while I look. There we are. Burke, Berkey. Oh, there's Chinua. So it was what the last, the last. Oh, did I did I leave it out? Page three. Five pages on there. There it is. So it's right in the middle. So easy to get lost in the middle. So. Oh, all right. And nobody messes with, with Gawain. So let that be a lesson to everyone. Nobody messes with Gawain. <laughs> so I'm just going to say, let us forward this, unless somebody had another comment. Okay. All right. Um, moving right along to item number 18, a resub badge for Hugo Smith. Sable, a mallet between the points of a stag's attire or uh, the mallet is absolutely, definitely the primary charge. Um, if the stag's attire is a, is a co-primary, that's fine, and if it's not, that's fine too. Uh, I, I'm comfortable. It's a beautifully, beautiful design. Um, yes, and it's very nice seeing this done, honestly, in computer art. Uh, the original submission was hand drawn at a pic on a picnic table at Saint George and the Dragon back in May. Is that when Saint George was? Anyway, so, um, yeah, so this one, I think uh, we have addressed the reason for return. Okay, so moving right along. Uh, Catherine de Fiamma, <laughs> new name. We, we have a... Fiamma is the Italian surname, but she wants Di Fiamma. Giovanni, can you tell me whether that's possible? Um, I would say, let's see. Um, yeah, I would have to find documentation, but uh, I mean, Di Medici is the surname of the family Medici. Um, oh. So I would say, um, I mean, Di Fiamma threw no bells at me. Um, okay. Let me check. Let me check append, uh, appendix C. Uh, yeah, C or A, real quick, and okay. see if that's con is covered for us there in Italian. Which would be awesome. Uh, 
work uh, appendix A lists patronymic as uh, marked as D B. Well, okay. So the problem, I guess, is that Fiamma was documented oh, is... as a surname, not as a given name. Okay, let me see here. Family names, let me check here. Family names typically modify a patronym or by name by removing the last vowel and adding I. Unmodified forms are also are found as well. That doesn't necessarily help us. Um, hmm. Ta -ta -ta. I'm, I'm going to check the article real quick. Okay. Um, I will. I will go ahead and say that I am inclined to send this up and uh, let the. Miracle workers up at Laurel level uh, figure it out because I bet they can. Yeah, I mean, there's none other, no others in the article listing D specifically. There are other um, articles, li yeah, um, what is the proper term for that? Yeah, articles, yeah, in the, in the, in the Arwen, Arwen uh, Arianwe yeah. article, there is other family names listed with articles in, before the family name, Del, Dal, Della. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not, at first glance, seeing any D, so it may just be... One second here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with sending it up, honestly. Um, okay. I know that's her preferred. They may come back with, with it without. Um, did she check the boxes of doom? She did not check the boxes of doom. And she's from... It's just a preferred. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, she's, she's from Wichita. So I will... So Marie Chantal Delaire did this consult. Okay. Um, um, yeah, I would say send it up and we'll have to see where it come, where it lands because I personally, I mean, I will look into more documentation for the external letter if necessary uh -huh. um, in preparation for that if it comes up. Um, personally, I don't see any issue with it, but a I don't have the back documentation currently to back that statement up. Sure. But I will look. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'll, we'll, we'll send it up and hope for the best. Um, item number 20, um, meaning we're about two thirds of the way through. Yay. Oh, <laughs> God, and it's been an hour. Uh, item number 20, a new alternate name for Lelia Corsini. Uh, a new Mongol name, Kyadun Alakha. And all of the documentation is from the heraldry.sca.org site. Which, by the way, Michael, if you had yep. looked here first, you might have saved yourself a lot of printing. <laughs> a good many of the um, Academy of San Gabriel articles have been that are that are on the list over to the heraldry.sca.org. Um, so if you see something on on St. Gabriel, it's always a good idea to check uh, the articles on the college's website. Yes, that is good advice. Meanwhile, I'm just going to say send it up and moving right along. Item number 21, a new device change for Piers Falconer. I really thought he would be in the meeting tonight because he's got about three or four submissions, not just his, but 
his uh, his his Golden Sea group. Uh, so his new device, he wants for the record, four... Chinua wasn't in the the SCA site. Oh, sorry. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> um, okay, so Piers wants or a chevron between three falcons striking to sinister azure. Uh, the old item is to be released. Both Gwen and Modar checked it for conflicts, didn't find any. Uh, these falcons striking look quite identifiable to me. Do they need to be identified as striking to sinister? Yes, because they are. And it's in there. Did I not read it? No, you did. Oh, he was just verifying that it needed to be there. I believe. Yes. Right. I, I was thinking that uh, striking Falcon, that was default. Uh, no. No. It's Most the critter. other way. Okay. Uh, striking Falcon default for striking would be the way you see Kalantir, the Kalantir Falcon um, most often. Which, which is, is the opposite direction. Striking to Dexter. Okay. As opposed to Ferds. Ferds is striking to Sinister. Oh, okay. I think it is. Um, all right, so I am going to note uh, 21D, send it up. All right, number 22, a badge for Piers Falconer. Fieldless, a pair of dividers per pale, azure, and ore. I repeat my comment that I wasn't sure if this really was a compass rather than a pair of dividers or I'm a divider. Okay. I'm okay with Volk's um, comment about the picnic. I mean, if it mentions it in the entry. Do you think we should reblazon it or send it up as is? I would send it up as, a, as dividers um, if that's what the client would prefer. Um, let me look at compass specifically. Uh, is it tools or is it science and engineering? Oh. It's, he, uh, he included the link to Compass. Oh, that makes too much sense. No, no, we can't have anybody. Make <laughs> uh, compass is sometimes drawn with a semicircular scale for spreading its measure. Apparently can be blazoned as a divider. Rather than a pair of dividers. I'm still inclined to let uh, Laurel uh, level. Yeah, it's, it's above our pay grade, to be honest, I believe. Uh, on Mist Home, it, it identifies it as a pair of calipers. <laughs> well, in that case, I'm absolutely going to let Wreath sort it out. Yeah, looking at Mist Home, the <laughs> calipers have have a little pinchy bit at the at the end, and this is either uh, compass or dividers. Um, I'm looking at a different picture, but it, it's fine. <laughs> well, I believe that um, if if the only issue I might see with divider is that we need a quote, uh, semi-circular scale for measuring its spread mm -hmm. as found in the period arms of De Capitanis de, C de Sesto or of Petzlinger. So they may <clears throat> come back and say this is just a compass, not a drawing compass or divider. Okay. But I say send it up as the client wishes. It's above our pay grade. I agree. Okay, uh, number 23, a resub device for Raleigh Makeba, Checky, Vert, and Orr on a Ben Sinister Sable, Three Suns Orr. This is basically flopping the colors, flipping the colors of the Checky because it was returned uh, previously because the green was touching the black Ben Sinister. So oh. he recolored it and the blazon is now Checky Vert and Or instead of Orn Vert. 
and they and also replaced the compass stars with suns it looks like yes he uh he said well you know i wanted suns originally but i thought i had to have compass stars it's like hey no time like the present to to fix that so if it if it works it's very aggy but it works <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly enough, this guy is a transplant to Aston Tor. He's originally from Ontier, hence the Czechy. Okay. But yeah, uh, okay. sons and stuff. He he designed this before he ever ever met Aggie. <laughs> That's yeah. fair. Okay, so item number twenty-four, a new name for for Ryognach Inyan Uyniklas. Another Neoclis. Okay. There was a family of four. And let me tell you this sad, sad story because it kind of is. Um, this is mom and three sons. And her husband, her deceased husband, was Nicholas. And ah. so, yeah, all of her boys are Mac Nicholas. And she wanted to have the Mac Nicholas somehow, Neoclis somehow, have that name, even though obviously. You know, she was right. Well, so I got an email from her and uh, she, oh, look, Magnus came through for us. Magnus came through for us. Okay. So the submitter wanted to be known as wife of Neoclus and Cena Appendix A says you can totally do that, but I didn't know the word and Magnus came through for us. Where is where's that? Um, it's the, oh, the last I'm comment. seeing it. Bean. Oh, and in fact, he just, he just yeah, Bean. He just commented that uh, that was today. He put that comment on here. Uh, so yes, Bean, he did. Yes. So I tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, I am going to kind of uh, rework the documentation a little bit. And submit it as uh, Ryognak Bean Neoclus, because that's what she wanted. Yeah, I mean, you might want to check to make sure that word works with her. Yeah. But yeah, otherwise, I don't see any reason why not to. So that if that's what she wanted. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm very happy to be able to. Oh, and it's for her. And I love it. It's right out of the appendix. It's right out of Appendix B. <gasps> Yay! It's the example out of Appendix B. Yay! Oh my God! So, okay, I'm. It's perfect. I'm. I'm, I'm feverishly happy. Let me just tell you. Ah, uh, okay. Change docs to bean. Let me put that in quotes. And I'm sure that's not pronounced Bean. It's pronounced Bane. It's probably Bon. Bon, yeah. N I O C L A I S. And oh, that's that's very that's beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's a lovely ending to that story. Oh, and number twenty-five is the the final son, Ronan McNeoclus. Um. Uh, Ronan is dated and dated and dated, and there is no problem with. I am very comfortable with that. Yeah. More comfortable than all his siblings, and yet very comfortable. All right, then here I go. I'm just going to say send it up. That was number 25. All right, number 20. Six, a new alternate name for some troublemaker named Saito Takauji. Not the Uji He's who already or the Uji. This Saito Takauji is our current gold falcon, for those of you playing along from out. Familiar. <laughs> uh, so once again, a Mongolian name documented from Appendix H. Korilaron Batu. So, I think it is well documented. Agreed. All right. I'm going to say send it up. Okay. Number 27. Sigurd Godwinson. A new name 
Uh, Sigurd is documented in Diploma Diplomatarium Novagiacum and Godwinson, of course. Well, we know where that's from. And we have right. no about the date of Godwinson. Are we worried about possible presumption to Harold? I, I mean, I don't know if he had a son, but yeah, I don't think Harold had any named brothers. Sigurd, but right, he had Eystein. or brothers. I mean, right, Harold's brother, the base. Oh, Tostig, that's who. It's in the song. Drix wrote it there. The base Earl in the north, the king's brother, the base Earl Tostig, did seek the king's crown with his sword. Okay. Because my, my brain, when I hear Sigurd, goes to Sigurd the Jarl of the Orkney Isles. So I was trying to figure out if that Sigurd was related to Godwinson. Nope. But I guess, I'm guess i guessing not. Not okay. as far as we know. <coughs> Sorry. Salud. Thank you. Um, then I'm, I'm comfortable. I was just worried about presumption, but I think we're clear on that. All right. And also... Um... Frida also came came through for us. So, um, and I'll leave it up to Gottfried whether he wants to include uh, her new documentation. Which was she spe specifying? Um, was she she just... says she says a holy Swedish Sigurd Godwinson, although it's not the temporally closest combination. Okay. But yeah. Gottfried can include new docs if he wants. Moving along, item number 28, uh, a resub badge for Sorsha Orion, Fieldless, a dragon's head, pale wise, cooped vert, breathing flames proper. Okay. Your specification on, uh, what was the, you 90 degrees counterclockwise from a fess wise would that count here so we have to reverse the dragon's head or not that's a good question because we so, can blaze so this if it was actually just pale wise the nose would be pa facing down right uh, but the the head the dragon's the top of his head is on the 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 dexter side versus on the sinister side. So it's I do like still pale I do wise like green anchors ways. Yeah. I do like green anchors uh pale wise contourney, which would probably be what I was saying anyways, but I am I am okay with adding with you know adding that to the blazon. Yeah. Uh Because I think our default, if with live, quote unquote living creatures, is to head goes up no matter what, because we can't put them upside down, correct? Right. So I don't think we need to specify head up. We have to specify the direction the default top of the head is. And I think Palewise Conterney does that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry, I was working it through out loud <laughs> in my head. Okay. So, but yeah, I'm saying that we're going to we're going to make that blazon tweak and send it up. Um because honestly, I think this is beyond our pay grade. Agreed. Um Goodness. The, There's a lot of commentary on this one. Well, and the picture that Modar included might suggest that her original submission that had the dragon's head kind of bend -wise or something would mm -hmm. have been just fine if we just didn't call it Uliolent. True. Well, okay. All right. That's... The dragon's head is tilted to chief, a posture that in wolves we call you. I don't care. I don't care. Got to Got to move on. <laughs> we could. I could go round and round on this one myself. But... Yeah, it's above pay, pay grade. Yes, please. Okay. 
Item number 29, Thomas Rennick, a new name. We have Thomas in uh, heraldry8.sca.org source and Rennick in Family Search with the a relevant page from Family Search actually printed out. I, I'm very comfortable with this. Okay. Um, we're within easily within 500. Yep. And they're both from England, so we're good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, number 30. Although. Oh, yes. Oh. Although. Thomas Renwick. Oh, look in at that. In gray period. In gray period from batch P, so it would work. Yes, it totally would. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> okay. That happened to me once. I was I was looking in Family Search to document something, and and somebody said, "Can I have that name there, that whole name?" And I said, "I think so." <laughs> sure. As long as they're not uber famous. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Do they have so, a Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've got that one as send it up. Now number thirty. Ah uh, the. Ah uh, the dissected boar. That dismembered boar. Uh, so Thorline, Kanakenhauer, her pale ghouls in azure, a boar rampant dismembered or maintaining a bone fracted argent. I'm comfortable with this depiction from, uh, you know, it fixes the issues which were, if I remember correctly, it was dismembered too close to the body or carved out of the body. Right. Right. And this was more period, according to Lee's arm armory. Yep. And I do think that it looks like the picture of a dismembered critter that was in... Uh, in the previous... Previous commentary, yeah. So... I, I'm very comfortable with it. All right. So, number 30, send it up. Number 31. A new name for Tulia Iona. She's also from Golden Sea. Um... She originally submitted as Tullius Iona. I contacted her. She said, it's fine. Feminize the, the Tulia part. Oh, right. Yeah. Documented from heraldry.sca.org. You can't get, you know, can't get any better. Uh, than yeah. And, uh, that's Nomen, right? Uh, or yes, Nomen, the, Nomen. Nomen is Tullius. So the family right. Tullius, so the feminized version. And then she found uh, a cognomen of uh, of Iona. Okay. So. Do we want to specify the structure? Because I know m most people see Latin names and go Roman Latin names to and go. Where's the third name? Ah, but then the answer is girls didn't have them. Heck, for that matter, Roman women didn't have names. Period. True. So. Okay, that's fine. I'm just mm -hmm. um, okay. I'm comfortable with it. Yeah. All right. Anybody from from the rest of you? You've been quiet. Anything to add? Nope. Okay. Sounds good to me. Okay. <laughs> I I all right. So item number thirty two, uh, name and device for Ulfhilder skin faxi. So Ulfhilder is from Gearbasi. Skinfaxi is from Gearbasi. The question of whether Skinfaxi should have two name, two ends, or one end, or not sure. I think that one goes above our pay grade. I think it pretty much does. I mean, it's is it a constructed by name, or is it mm -mm. a by name they found right out of Gearbasi? It's right there in Gearbasi. Oh, they're talking. Oh, okay. So Frida found it in Lind. Oh. And that's where she's bringing oh. it up. Okay. Uh, I thought uh, Lind had some issues and I, that were found. I don't, I don't know. Well, and it could be that Frida is, in fact, pointing out an issue. Oh, oh, Frida. I think Lind was. Gearbasi might have the typo because it came from Lind, which had the typo. Oh. She's saying Gearbasi may have a typo, 
Was it Gearbasi that was found to have some typos or Lind? I knew I one think, of them was. But... I think Gearbasi has the occasional typo. Okay. Above our pay grade. Well, exactly. Typos are above our pay grade. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, yeah, typos in documentation that we absolutely rely on. Is above our pay grade. All right. As for the device, it is Vert, a Wolf Passant Regardant Argent, and on a Chief or three Triquetras Sable. Somebody... I don't have any issue with the Wolf. I, that I, I'm not. I haven't fully read what they're saying, but. Um... Basically, that it really looked well. Kino Kotri said that she thought it kind of looked like maybe modern looking drawing. She says it's cool looking, but yeah, not but I would, I would say that it may look cool looking, but it was also probably drawn on a picnic table or well, at actually, an event. It, it was drawn at an event by a laurel, a CNI laurel. Oh. <laughs> um, but it's an artist note at most, uh, I'd say. At right. least at our level. Right. The only issue that I would have is that the tail is not uniformly bushy. So true. Yeah. But but again, is that is that going it doesn't look like flames, which could be the other connotation. Right. So they were trying to do a bushy tail <clears throat> and didn't succeed yeah or um, you know it's at most i think an artist note from kingdom but i don't think it should stop the process i agree all right so i'm just gonna say send it up okay and the number 33 a request for reblazon essentially from william fletcher of carberry um, and I will tell you that Sophia LaRousse did the documentation for it, and she sent me okay. a dozen pages. <laughs> um, no, she didn't send me a dozen pages, but she, she sent, she sent more than, oh, this was not the one she sent me more than, but, but she, she, she did the documentation and really the point of it, and I will summarize here. The point of it is that when he created the original device submission, he just went online. This was back in the days when, ooh, clip art, what's that uh -huh. kind of a thing? And he got something that was round on the bottom and had a long neck looking thing. And it was, the clip art said it was a wine flask and that's what he wanted. And so that's the one he picked. And it's unfortunate okay. that it turned out that the labeling of the clip art as a wine flask was wrong. But it looks like a canteen with a long neck to me. So Yeah, I would not not notice that as a whistle. It's the or lanyard whatever. that makes it a whistle. It, it, ah. It does so look if a lot it didn't like have the, the lanyard the on it. Missed home whistle. Yeah. Right, but it, and I agree, but I don't know. I it, it's above our pay yeah, grade. Yeah, this is totally above our pay grade. <laughs> so I, you know, I good luck to him. Yeah. Uh yeah. Um, okay, so that's every item. I would like to go down through uh, the notes and make sure that I haven't missed anything. All right, taking it from the top. Uh, item number one is return for conflict, pure and simple. And then, you know, whoever's going to follow up with the client, uh, like whoever the consulting herald was. So uh, I'll reach out to either the client or to the consulting herald. Uh, I need to type. I can't type. Or consulting herald. Okay, item number two. Simply send it up to or to no. Yes, number two. It was a device. Send it up. Item number yep. three. Name. Send it up. Four. The name and device. Send them both up. 
five, the name, send it up. Note that Magnus's comment is a direct quote from Cena, Appendix A. And number five, the device, send it up. Six, the name, send it up. Seven, the name, send it up. And by send it up, I mean forward it to Laurel. Uh, number eight, the device, reblazon as Argent, a double-headed eagle sable maintaining a Warhammer fesswise inverted within a Borger Azure and send it up. Number nine, a name, send it up. Number 10, the device, we will pin it, but we will seek a letter of permission to conflict from the East Kingdom. And Giovanni, you're taking point on that. Yep. The person is a web minister, and you kind of have an in that way. Something like that. Something like that. All right. Uh, number 11, the device, send it up. 12, the name, send it up. 13, send up that badge. 14, send up the device. 15, send up the badge. E6. What? I, I squeed. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm looking been... at my, so I don't see you. No, that's okay. Okay. Uh, number number sixteen. The device we're going to reblazon as Argent infest two Thirsi proper and on a chief vert and arrow fesswise or and mention that the arrow could be beefed up, but we're going to send it up anyway. Agreed. Uh, Seventeen. The name. Send it up. 18, the badge, send up. 19, send up the name. 20, send up the name. 21, the device to be sent up. 22, the badge to be sent up. 23, a device to be sent up. 24, the name. We're going to document, change the name and document it as uh, Ryogonek Bane Neoclis and send it up that way with submitter submission, uh, submitter's permission, with submitter's permission. Number 25, a name, send it up. 26, send up that name. 27, send up that name. 28, reblazon it as fieldless, a dragon's head, pale wise conterney cooped vert breathing flames proper and send it up and hope for the best uh 29 name send it up 30 device send it up 31 name send it up 32 name send it up and the device for 32 send that up 33 above our pay grade send it up and that is all the decisions that we made Woohoo! Whew, thank goodness we got through that uh, Gottfried has a heck of a job in front of him. Well, not, not really, because we made very few reblazoning. So before we sign off, uh, I will mention that the next decision meeting will be on March 26th. That is the fourth Monday of March. Does anybody else have anything to add? I believe uh, when is... Red Hawk's decision, external commentary. Ooh, I believe I she does that second week, right? Some, oh, yeah, she does. I, I wasn't able to sit in on her last one, so I don't know. But I'm assuming it's probably, if she's going by standard, her normal turnaround, I'm guessing that'll be the 12th yeah. for an external meeting. Yes, that, I'm looking at my calendar, and yes, I would say the 12th. Uh, if she does it on the second Monday, but it seems to me she did it on a Sunday last time. And there was a reason. And that's why it was because there was an important barony meeting and bar uh, uh, local barony meetings are Mondays. Okay. Um, but if she normally does it on uh, that Monday, then um, yes, mark your calendars, March the 12th, which happens to be my birthday. Happy early birthday. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, then I'm going to go ahead and click stop and I'm going to thank everybody for playing along. I hope we, uh, you know, learned a lot and haven't bored the folks on YouTube. Uh, and Thanks for uh, letting me sit in. You are quite welcome here. Of uh, course. Come along next time. You were very helpful, too. So.
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and end the broadcast. Here we go.